to me now that the roar of that day began with the light and all through long and dragging hours its thunder formed a background to our pain and terror. As I stared from the window of our cellar, I saw a Union soldier running, his breath coming in gas, a group of Confederates almost upon him. He was in full flight, not about to give up. Shoot him! Shoot him! yelled a pursuer. A rifle cracked, and the fugitive fell dead at our door. I took some chloroform, but not enough, for I distinctly remember having said, Oh, don't saw that bone until I have had more chloroform. I said, I won't be able to salute you, doctor, with my right hand the next time I pass through Maryland. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. He asked me to read John 14 from the Bible. It was the passage his family read around the family altar in their home's living room the morning Alexander left for battle. Sally waved as the wagon pulled away and waved goodbye to them and to the most unforgettable days of her life. She no longer sickened at seeing blood because she had come to know the souls the blood had covered. She wrote, Truly, these were men. Truly, we shall not see the likes of them again. But they did not embrace it. But, Mr. President, these poor people could not read your proclamation. While he spoke, Lincoln was writing on a piece of paper. Honorable E.M. Stanton, Secretary of War, do not fail to have an interview with this most extraordinary and intelligent black man, A. Lincoln. Stanton is firing. Listen, he is in his glory. A great race numbering four million is suddenly brought into freedom. All the world is looking to see whether the prophecies of the enemies of that race will be fulfilled or falsified. It rests upon the men of that race to tell. Delaney made it in time to see the flags changed at Fort Sumter with his son, a young private, also there. and his old friend and comrade in arms, William Lloyd Garrison, who, as he bade goodbye to a large, adoring audience in Charleston, said, I have always advocated non-resistance, but this much I say to you, come what may, never will you submit again to slavery. Do anything, die first, but don't submit again to them. Never again be slaves. Farewell. A man standing almost as close as the hangman listened as Bell spoke to the group. He said, as some author has said, we may be as near to God on the scaffold as elsewhere. I protest against the execution of this sentence it is a murder. I die in the service and defense of my country. I have nothing more to say. Then there followed a long six-minute wait. Forever, it seemed, identical to the wait that John Brown was forced to undergo on the gallows in Charlestown six long years before. Then, the close-by reporter wrote, I alone, 
heard him utter the words, I am coming to you quickly, Alice. Do not think I am afraid. The tone of his voice was low and steady, and the next instant he was launched into eternity. But there was something brave and simple in these last words, the memory of which has never ceased to haunt me. Woe, woe is us, the startled mothers cried. While we have slept, our noble sons have died. Woe, woe is us, how strange and sad that all our glorious visions fled have left us nothing real but dread in the land where we were dreaming. A last childhood. What a brief period. Visitations of dark grief and sorrow have been visited upon me. Such a checkered life that I almost am inclined to doubt I was ever a child. That period is so far away and the glowing shadows of the present so entirely envelop my existence. Oh, why is it that we so cling to life from the cradle to the grave, tears are meted out to us. Has it been so with every born on earth? His life work was lost when a library burned, and the ancestors of those who left the, for Africa in his lifetime and with his blessing still turned the native soil. Act. Act in the living present, but act. Speak the truth and leave the rest to God. <laughs> no more stories, Martin. <laughs> no more stories, Martin. <laughs> <laughs>